like you wouldn't want to walk up here. <laughs> Get <in. laughs> Ernie was afraid he was going to teach this morning. Well, happy daylight savings time. It looks like some of our folks are out celebrating daylight savings time this morning. I would like to introduce somebody new to you back here in the back, in the back corner. Jenny said she wanted a new man. Now she's back. Please. Morning. When I saw Wayne this morning, I couldn't help but think about Samson. <laughs> Went to sleep and woke up, and hello. Uh, I asked Wayne, I said, uh, did she spay or neuter you while you were down? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not, so that's all, that's all good. Got that summer clip going. That's out. right, that's right. Well, it's good to see you again this morning. I did hear from uh, Keenan yesterday, or as of last night, and they were on the west side of St. Louis. So, heading back this way, they still have a long way to go. You know, it's a long way out to where they go. I mean, it's a, it's a long way. If you drive it straight, it's right at 30 hours. Yeah. That takes some tag team and driving there. But it, it's a long way. We need to continue to pray for them. I am glad that they're behind this storm system that just passed through here. So that's good. They did. They were in that storm going out there. That the storm that's previous in, in some real severe weather, and uh, God protected them. Uh, we're going to pick up around where we were last week. I want to hear from you this morning. What are some situations of life that specifically? regard your time that are aggravating, that just aggravate you. What do you mean? I got two or three things that, that you know, that it just a waste of my time. Going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's that eight hours a day that gets you in it, Billy. Filling out tax forms. Filling out tax forms. Well, we're coming up to that. Well, it's coming up, trying to get that dad gum long to start for the first time in the season. There we go. So that you can work. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting behind people at stoplights won't turn left when they got a half a mile ahead of them that's clear. There we go. There we go. My head's ringing. And are, you know, they've proven that, that people who are on their phone at lights are slower to get off the lights. Yeah. Or texting. Yeah, or texting. We, we just spent, let's see, 20 hours on the interstate, so people in the left lane going lower than the speed limit. Yeah. They don't yeah. have to go over the speed limit. If there's somebody behind them, they need to get out of the way. Right. Well, <laughs> Joe, could you please talk to Billy about this anger back there, man? When you get into the automobiles and the things of that nature, yeah. we can talk all day. <laughs> What about when you you call, I don't want to call anybody who anybody in here works. Anybody work for, say, AT&T? Does anybody work? Okay, you dial the number. What do you hear? Well, you know, we're so glad you called. And, you know, if you want number one, number two, number three, number eight, number 12, and if you forgot these, hit eight, and we'll play them all for you again. And you sit there and you wait. But your call is so important. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. You sit there and wait and wait and wait. And then when you finally get somebody, it's somebody from India. Right, exactly. I asked huh? that old boy last week where he was at and how big a man he was. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, could you please deal with Ernie, too? <laughs> That's it. When I call the VA and they put you on the little yeah. thing, and you hold for 30 minutes, it automatically hangs up on you. Uh, oh, now that's aggravating right oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've had, I think my wife's had one or two of those that just hang up on you. Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you for holding. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of persnickety sometime when it comes to our time, isn't it? I mean, how many of you, when you go to the grocery store, you always look for the shortest line? Huh? Of course, now these days, you pretty much go check yourself out. I mean, we Walmart people, you go check your own self out. 
but you look for the shortest line and you know used to I'd look for the shortest line and invariably I'd get up there and there'd be a price check or something on an item from somebody in front of me you're sitting there you know I should have gone to the other line okay we're kind of persnickety when it comes to things about our time let's look at one scripture that kind of sets the tone for everything we're going to see today let's go to one of the most famous chapters in the Old Testament that'd be Isaiah chapter 55 you probably have this verse memorized Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 9 For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. What does that tell us? What's the short, what's, what's the short end, what's the short? God's got this. God's got this. No matter what you think about it. His grace is sufficient. I was going to go, I did look at that scripture, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. You know, Paul asked ask God uh, three times to help him out with whatever this affliction was. And he said what? My grace is sufficient. If you read the next verse, it says, listen, I did this so that you won't be dependent upon yourself. That's Ed Zellner paraphrase there. But you will be dependent upon me. Okay, that's, I'm pretty sure it's 2 Corinthians chapter 7, but we won't go there. Last, last week we looked at this guy, Nehemiah. Did he have some time issues? Man, wasn't it great? I mean, to be in, in captivity and no telling how long it took him to get to the position that he was, which was the cupbearer. So he endured that time, and then news comes that, you know, man, it's still messed up over there in Jerusalem. <laughs> You know, we've, we've made a little bit of a headway on some buildings, but we've been working on it for how long? Do you remember? 75 years. 100 years. 100 years. Okay? Me and Ernie are saying what? Well, we'll get the work team together, and Saturday we'll all meet the church for donuts and coffee, and then we'll go out there and we'll fix that situation. Did it happen like that? Did a fixer just show it? Did Nehemiah assume that fixer role no he didn't he waited and in that period of waiting God did what he gave him a vision as to how this is going to work and then as he followed God's timeline and God's plan God opened up just the right time just the right day just the right moment to go before the king and we won't go into all the details about about that you remember he was sad and so forth and you didn't do that as far as the cupbearer was concerned. But God worked a perfect plan. Nehemiah, right in the middle of it, Ernie, this is what you were talking about this morning. He says, you know, when the king asked me that, he said, I did what? I prayed. I prayed. I mean, you ever had, a, you ever had one of those instances where, you know, th there's no time to kneel or close your eyes or anything, but I'm praying. I got to pray right here. And that was one of them. So God worked through Nehemiah. He did, did he do great things? Did he? And they had a lot of difficulties, both with the people that he was working with. You know, they got in there and some of the people were complaining that some of them got to work over here. Some of them got to work over here. And she touched me and, and all that <laughs> sort of stuff. Besides Tobiah and his little buddy, Sanballat, uh, causing problems from without, <laughs> Nehemiah dealt with all this. And in 52 days, and they didn't have cat machinery and all that stuff, and these walls were big, and, and in many cases they were up to 12 feet wide. I mean, th this is no small, uh, no small deal. 52 days, God made it happen, and at that point, Nehemiah was careful to give God the glory on it. Let me put this in right here because we're going to touch this in a minute. Folks, there's no, and this is a soapbox, so just take it for what it's worth. There's no such thing as luck. If you believe in luck, you believe that God's not in charge of things. You really do. Now, can you imagine Nehemiah getting to the end of this and say, man, we, we just hit a lucky streak. 
<laughs> Nehemiah praised God, and he gave God the glory for it. Okay, we're going to look at another example of that today. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. You know, if, if we're ever fortunate enough, all of any of us, to go to Israel, parts of that wall are there today. Yeah. It's amazing. What a deal. We're going to talk about that other wall in the Old Testament too today. How many of you have read the story of Elijah? Go ahead and raise your hand. You know you've read the story of Elijah. Who are some of the key players in the story of Elijah when we get to chapter 17? Who is the king? And his beloved wife. Ahab was the king and Jezebel was his wife. Man, she must have really been a trip. I mean, that she, I, I mean, from everything that I read in there, she really wore the pants in that, in that, because I mean, when, you know, they wouldn't give Ahab, the, the guy wouldn't sell Ahab his vineyard and he got all pouty and stuff. Well, who came in and took over? She said, I'll take care of that matter. I'll take care of that matter. Did she have her end of life? Elijah predicted her end of life. Did it happen for her that way? She hated Elijah now. I mean, this woman hated Elijah. How, what was her demise? How did she die? Was she beheaded? She, no. She fell out the window, and just as Elijah had said what? The dogs ate her and licked the blood off the tree. Yeah, I'm telling you. But she hated Elijah. Let's, let's look at this. Chapter 17, verse 1 through 5, there's, Elijah is dealing in God's time. Now, let's see what it says. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Am I in the right place? No. No, no where am I at here? Oh, I'm in fifth. Yeah, you thought, I, you thought your Bible went wrong. I was in chapter 15. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitants of, in the, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, who is the king, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Man, huh? You go unto the king and tell him that. Reckon we could get him to say something about First <laughs> <laughs> Kings chapter 17. I, I'm sorry, I got you messed up. Verse 2, And the word of the Lord came in him, saying, Get thee hence. Why? Do you think that would have been a safe place for him to stick around? And God, probably not. Now, God could do whatever God wanted to do, but in God's plan... God is moving Elijah. Even he's dealing with this. The, he's, he's just now cost, said there's not going to be a rain. It's going to be extreme drought. And it happened. But he's moving him to somewhere else here. And we're going to see that God's going to provide for him. But God's got some other things he wants us to do. Now listen, when we're, when we're involved in God's plan, is it possible to multitask? Could God have us on a multitasking journey? Okay? He brings us to point A, but really he's, he's got us there, and there's something happening there, but he's, he really needs us over here at point B because there's a situation there that he needs you to minister to. Okay? Look at what happens. Chapter 17, verse 3. Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself in the brook of Cherith, the brook Cherith, that is, before Judah. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, that I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. All good? All good? Now, let me ask you, would that be, you know, I don't care how much you like the outdoors, after a few months of that, you think that would maybe get a little bit old? You know, just by yourself and whatever the ravens brought him, which... I'm sure God was good to him. The ravens fed him, and he, he was drinking. And the, the purpose of that was what? He had to get away from Ahab and Jezebel. He had to get away from them. But you know, there's a further purpose in that. What is it? Read down, read down next. What, what happens next? 
In the very next verse is what happens. The brook dried up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, something has happened. You know, uh, I got sick. I was going to, Billy's going to work. Everything's all good. And then stubbed his toe. He's off work for two. My goodness gracious, something happens. God, where are you? Now, it doesn't say that Elijah said any of that, but can we do that sometimes? The brook dried up because what? It's time to, it's time to go. Somebody down at another place, I wrote it down here, uh, she is Zarephath. Somebody is Zarephath needed Elijah. Well, Elijah's on a mission involving Ahab and Jezebel in the kingdom there. So shouldn't he just stall there and, and wait until it's time? Well, God didn't have that in mind, did he? Somebody needed him down here at Zarephath. Verse 10 through 15. It says, So he rose and went to Zarephath, and he came to the gate of the city. And behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks and called her. He said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. What's the rest of this story? So I don't have to read. What happened? Is this the one where her son, was, she says, This is all I've got. That's it. Once we do this, we're going to die. That's it. Yeah. And he asked her for food and water. Did somebody need him down here at this place at Zarephath? Okay. Just imagine God's timing working a little bit different. This woman and her son probably would have died, Miss Beth. They probably would have died because, I mean, food was gone. Water was very scarce. But God had a plan. What? He moved. He had situation A going on, but situation B needed his attention. So he went down there. The widow woman followed his instructions. Well, that's a step of faith, wasn't it? Was that a step of faith? She followed his instructions that God blessed her. What was, the, what was the immediate blessing? Elijah told her, this is, good, this is what's going to happen for you and your son. Your barrel of meal will not run out. Man, now is that big? That's big. Now, remember, Elijah's got issues up here with Ahab and Jezebel but God has God had another place he needed to move him okay follow the story on and what do we see something terrible happens something terrible happens what is it Joe the son died the son died man is that pretty tragic now Elijah was living there with these people they built the prophet's room on for him and so forth Look what happens. Verse 19 through 23. Let's jump down there. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. He took him out of her bosom and carried him up to the loft where he abode and laid upon his own bed. And he cried unto the, cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, my God, I pray thee, let the child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard, Ernie. The Lord heard it. Yeah, the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived him. Elijah took the child, brought him down into the chamber of the house, and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said unto thee, See, thy son liveth. Man. He's talking about them fellers whose name begin with a knee. <laughs> Verse 24. Now this is part of today's lesson. You see a what? You see a testimony. I think too many times we follow this. You know, when the hand of God has worked in our life and in our situation, we say, man, I just lucked out on that deal. <laughs> What should happen? Listen, we need to pray. Is there any problem with us praising God and saying, you know, well, God's in charge of this and praise God, you know, he worked this out or he is working this out. Or I'm in the process and God's, God's working this out. But sometimes do we get to this point when God's worked in mighty ways in our lives and we kind of poo-poo it? Huh? Listen, from what I see in the scriptures, we ought to be shouting it from the, from the rooftops. 
But listen, God, God's doing this. God did this in my life. And verse 24 says, The woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. And should that be, I mean, should that be our testimony to those we're around, Billy, those you work with? Huh? Should it? If Listen. You know, Satan tries to steal the Lord's honor and glory. He does. Any chance he can. Exactly. They folks, it'll go by what day they was born and look at the stars and the moon and come up with some kind of witchcraft there. Yeah. Oh, you got food in your cabinet. Give God the glory and the praise. Amen. Water to cold water to drink. Amen. Chapter 18 and verse 1. Look what happens. And after, and it came to pass, how long? Yeah, a long time. The word of the Lord came to Elijah the third year saying, do what? Go show yourself to Ahab. Okay, so we're back to situation number one. Just think it, we won't go into the detail about it, but all that, that, he, uh, that he followed God's plan and God's timing, you know, with regard to Jezebel, with regard to Obadiah, uh, what about when he got to Mount Carmel? Did he follow God's plan to a T there? My, if I'd have been in charge, I'd have fried all of them right away. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone through put you know put you know sixty more barrels of water on there. I, I wouldn't have gone. I wouldn't have done that, man. I I just crispy crunched them all right there. <laughs> but he followed God's plan in God's time to a T. Now, I want us to look at somebody else here. Do, do sometimes do God's plans seem off the wall or even crazy to us? Do they? Now, back to our original verse, it said what? My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Joshua, let's go there. Joshua. Chapter number, uh, we're going to go to, uh, just briefly look at Joshua chapter number 4. Transition time, uh, Moses has passed away. Joshua is now uh, the leader of the Israelites. Were they to lead? Man, they were not only complainers, but there was they had problems. Yeah, they they were hard. You know, it's what's that trying to herd cats or something like that sometimes. So he says, what he got? He went through everything. They came up to the Jordan River, and what happens? We got a problem here. Would Moses? Would Moses's shoes be hard to fill? Probably, folks, if not, one of the top echelon of leaders in all of the Bible. Okay? Big shoes to follow. But we find Joshua, he gets to the Jordan River, and God empowers him. What happens? The Jordan River split apart, and they walked across. And word of that spread everywhere. <clears throat> everywhere. I want you to see a, a verse here. Uh, the last verse. The last verse of chapter number 4. Verse 14. On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they feared or they respected him as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. So what just transpired in verse 14? He's officially become the leader of Israel. God has moved in such a way that they realize that he's God's man in God's place with God's purpose. So we move over to chapter number 6. Is anybody in here a military? Anybody in here been in the military? Thank you for your service. Look at what we see in chapter number six. Now, I'm not a military guy. The Vietnam War ended the year I graduated high school, and by the time the rest of things came along, I was too old for that, so I, I never served. But look what we see in chapter number six of verse one through five. Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Why was it shut up? 
they heard what happened over there at the Jordan River. That's why it was closed up tight. They had a wall and it was closed up tight. So the children of Israel, none went in, none came out. And the Lord said unto Joshua, I have given thee, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark of the uh, uh, seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day shall compass the city seven times. The priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that as they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now, I'm not a military person, but that seems awful far out. <laughs> Number one, am I going to drag these people up there for six days? Am I going to? And they were told it had to be an absolute quiet, not a sound. Now, that would have been kind of eerie if you were standing up on the wall inside Jericho and you saw that. <laughs> but is that kind of strange military strategy? Is it? And, okay, and now on the, the seventh day, what are you going to do? You, you're going to go around. You're going to go around multiple times, and then all at once, we just want everybody to shout, and these horns are going to blow. And what's going to happen? Man, I'd have been, I'd have been constructing those. Uh, what do you call those big boomerang? Uh, those big, catapults. yeah, catapults. Man, I'd have been, you know, I'd have been making catapults. We'd been out there figuring some of this stuff out, but. The, you know, in a few days, we'd have made the assault. But what is that? That's the fixer. That's the fixer guy. Instead of waiting on God and doing it God's way, that's stepping in on God's territory and God's plan and trying to fix the situation, which we do from time to time. We know the story. We're not gonna, we don't have time to go into all that, that happens here. But did it happen just exactly the way that God said it would happen? Listen, you look in the Old Testament, are there multiple battles that God fought, period, in the children? You remember the, the battle that they fought when he said, I just want you to go down there and line up, you know, along the tree's edge in front of that city, and all of a sudden a, a, a big wind came. You could hear, you know, where, I'm, where, where we're at, we can hear the, the wind coming in the trees. Big wind came, so scared the people of the city that what happened? They killed each other. <laughs> Can God do that if he wants to? Okay, so it happened just exactly the way God said it was to happen. They marched in there and they took, took uh, the city and, and conquered it, but there were specific instructions in this victory. What was it? You don't take anything. There's only certain things you can take, and those things are to be dedicated to the Lord. Did that happen? No. Okay, now, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to surmise on to <laughs> Joshua. But as we move into chapter, to the next chapter, you know, the next city in line was Ai, which was just a speck compared to Jericho. Just a small town. I don't know whether Joshua got the big head you know, he got puffed up in himself, maybe, over this victory, or what? But as, when you look into the next chapter, you know what you see? He goes into battle. He says, oh, it's just small town, so I'm just going to send a few guys up there. But what's missing? He never prayed. He never asked God about it. Never prayed, and he never asked God about it. What happened? They got licked. The Bible tells us, I didn't write down, but in this chapter there, they lost 36 people. And even to this day, that's a big number for any Israelite. You know, when they go into war, when they're, when they're into battle, they count on losing how many? Zero. And that's how they operate. So 36 is a big one. What was the problem? It's a problem with Joshua. He didn't pray and entreat the Lord. You think if he had of, God would have said, hey, uh, we got a little problem in the camp. 
We can't, we can't uh, go forward with AI until we take care of this problem. 36 men who, chances are they had no idea of what Aiken had done. They lost their lives in that battle. Because what? Well, Josh was prodding right along. Things are going along great. God's directing it. But all of a sudden, this battle comes up and he leaves God at home. He doesn't ask for God's direction or God's uh, plan of battle in this. And they went up and not only were they defeated, but they were soundly defeated. I mean, it says that the people of Ai chased them for a long way. Can that happen to us? We can be prodding along. God, God's blessings are great, you know. And, and all of a sudden, you know, we got a little situation, whatever it happens. And, and uh, you know, Fixer Ed just steps up. Don't consult God. Don't check with God. Just take care of it. It can happen, and it does happen. What was one of the big factors that happened with this whole situation with Achan and Joshua's not consulting with the Lord? You know what it was? It was delay. You look at the chapters that follow this, it was a lengthy process to weed Achan out. This was no overnight deal. They went through every tribe of the children of Israel, person by person, before they finally located AI, uh, Achan. Meanwhile, everybody's what? Instead of moving further in the direction God wanted them to go, where are we? Stuck. We're stalled. We're so, can sin do that to us? Can it? When we have sin, unconfessed sin in our life, sin that we've not repented of, turned and gone the other way, can it stall us out? It can. Not part of God's plan, God's process. Let me leave you with six or seven things here. The last two are really important. We'll look at one scripture. Sometimes God's timing challenges our comfort zone. I could have fixed that problem yesterday. Sometimes it does. It challenges our comfort zone. It gets us out of I mean, what about Nehemiah? Did it, did it get him out of his comfort zone? Exactly. Okay. Sometimes God's timing has us lay low, as with Elijah. Are there times when God says, just sit down? Sit down. Not, right now is not the time. It's time for you just to sit down and let me do some working on this thing, and I'll get back with you. I'll let you know when it's time for you to move forward. Okay? Sometime God's timing is present for the blessings of others. My son, you know, your thumb might have got damaged, had problems, because God said, you know, I need you over here so that you can be a blessing over here. I, I really think sometimes, you know, we uh, health issues, hospital issues, God may just be placing us where he needs us. And man, we've got to be careful that when we get to those, we don't just say, you know, it's all about me. What a, what a different attitude going into uh, whatever challenge it may be in life Instead of saying, you know, this is terrible, you know, this hurts, or, you know, I don't like this, or it's holding me up, or whatever. Then an attitude saying, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch God work through this situation, and I'm going to be open for opportunities that he gives me to be a blessing to other people. Did that happen to Elijah? Big blessing. He brought the lady's son back to life. Okay. Can it happen to us? You know, there may be people that need the gospel shared with them in places where our distressful situations may take us. Right? They may need the gospel shared with them. Okay? All right. Uh, sometimes God's plan and timing are counter to the world's thinking. They say, man, you're crazy. You're doing what? But once again, his ways and his thoughts 
are a lot higher and better than my thoughts and my ways. Okay? Do we have to be careful for the peer pressure part of this? Yeah. Okay. All right. They're counter to the world's thinking. Sometimes God's plan is stalled due to lack of prayer and the three-letter word, sin. It is as in the case of Joshua. Okay, strive to follow God's leading and allow God to work when? Work in His time. We Westerners like it when? Yesterday. We want it in. All right, we need to work in His time. I've talked to you about this before, but plant spiritual markers. Make markers in your life, either a good mental mark, uh, if you're a journal person, write things down of how God has worked in this situation, and he has brought me through, he's blessed in this particular way, so that what happens down the road? When we come up to situation, the next situation, what? We've got a good reminder, a good testimony of how God worked in this situation. Can we be like ducks sometime? You wake up in a new world every day? Just go from one dilemma to one dilemma. Sometimes we have times where we have a dilemma after a dilemma after a dilemma. But listen, can we follow God's leadership and God's timing through those dilemmas and not be like the duck who just wakes up in the world and says, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what. No, we should be saying what? How can God use me in this dilemma? Okay, how can God use me? If you hadn't got anything else, get these two. Ernie talked about this first one. Always, our following of God and his timing should bring glory to God. Okay, don't get down to the end of your situation and say, man, I was just fortunate. I just got lucky on that. You know, boy, I'm, I'm just lucky that I still have two of them. Listen, can we praise God for that? Huh? And should we praise God for that? We ought to praise God for that. Listen, do, might there be somebody else that needs that, that word of praise? Why might there be some opportunity that opens up to us because of that? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. This will be the last scripture we look at. Now this is important because this gives us purpose. This gives us purpose wherever we find ourselves in life. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Now God is the, the source of all comfort, but look what it says in verse 4. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, in all our difficulties of life. Why? Here's the purpose. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. That's purpose right there. By the comfort wherewith we were comforted ourselves of God. So we take, we take our situation, we praise God through it, we look for opportunities while we're in it, and then when it's over, we make ourselves a spiritual marker about it and then all along the way from then on, we do what? We, we bring glory and honor to God for helping us, for directing us through whatever situation we find. And we look for opportunities there. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Joe, why don't you lead some prayers we dismissed today? Father, we, we're so blessed. We're so thankful for your blessings. And Lord, what Ed shared with us today is so applicable to so many things that we all experience. And Father, your your ways and your thoughts are so so 
or above ours. And we just need to learn to trust in you. Father, once again, we lift up those folks on the prayer list and those unspoken that you would do what you do and what your will is to be done with those. And I pray particularly for Jean's mom, Lord. I just mm -hmm. I just feel for her and and the spirit of loneliness that she feels. And I pray God that you would particularly minister to her. And Lord, I pray that you uh, that we walk out of here today with you and on our hearts and minds throughout the day that we wake up with you tomorrow morning and think about you and, and ask for your filling and that would be a blessing to those that Lord every day every day I know I, I we need to we need to consult with you and talk with you and ask you every day Father, I pray for our pastor. We pray for the revival to come. We pray for our city and our community. We pray for the drug addicts, Lord, that are so in bondage to this. We pray for the, the loved ones. We pray for the unsaved that we see every day and, and uh, work with and, and interact with. May we have a maybe may we have a word here or there or whatever you direct us to do or say. Lord, I pray uh, against the, the the spirit of demons that will be all over Morristown as this and it will increase as this revival gets closer. That we pray against the enemy and all that he'll try to do. Lord, we pray for our country. And as Ed mentioned, you know, so much of the so much of the world we see it every day that has no they they think that <clears throat> what we espouse as Christians is so silly and so non-credible Father they have no idea of your love for them and of your plans for them Lord we thank you for the sunshine today and we thank you just for bringing this group together and we pray for those that aren't with us today Lord We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.